Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday morning, June the 25th. A couple things I want to focus in on in today's video discussion. One is the latest on the tropics. Uh, we'll take a look at the latest on Sahara, a desert air that has pushed to the west out over the Atlantic Ocean and all the way into the Caribbean Sea. And it certainly uh, appears to be acting as an inhibiting factor. And we talked about this uh, for the past couple of months, really, since the uh, uh, tropical outlook came out a few months ago. We talked about that is one potential inhibiting factor to tropical storm formation or intensification in the Atlantic Basin. I do believe we'll have an influx from time to time from the northern part of Africa, the Sahara Desert region, all the way out into the tropical part of the Atlantic. Uh, favorable signs for tropical activity this year are the development of La Nina cooler than normal sea surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean and generally warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the uh, tropical Atlantic. However, there are some interesting changes going on that we'll talk about over the next few minutes with respect to sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Basin. Let's start off here by taking a look at the uh, NOAA uh, National Hurricane Center prediction here over the next seven days or so. There is one uh, tropical wave right now, uh, way down here in the southeastern part of the Caribbean. This is the west coast of Africa right here. Nothing really has uh, come off of Africa yet, but that uh, will probably start to see more and more African waves over the next few weeks going into uh, July and then August across uh, the tropical part of the Atlantic Ocean. This particular system looks like it'll head in much the same direction as the prior system here and that is towards the Yucatan Peninsula region right here of Mexico and then perhaps right into the eastern part of Mexico perhaps uh, as far north as the uh, southeastern part of Texas that remains to be seen. Now whether or not it reaches a named tropical storm uh, probably not but it's uh, certainly uh, too close to call right now as to whether or not this becomes a named tropical system. I do believe we've had our first one in the same area that was named Alberto. And uh, again, in the tropical outlook that we issued a couple of months ago, I thought that this region right here would be the most active region during this 2024 tropical season, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we'll continue to monitor that situation over the next several weeks. Officially, the tropical season began on June 1st in the Atlantic Basin, but obviously it can uh, start before that and it can go all the way into September, October, in some cases even to the uh, month of November. I do believe it'll be an above normal uh, season, but uh, uh, I also believe it won't be a, a historically high season like uh, some forecasters are issuing out there. I hope I'm right and they're wrong and we'll just have to wait and see on that over the next several weeks and really over the next few months. Now again we have a couple of big favorable factors for tropical storm formation in the Atlantic Basin. Again the development, the intensification of La Nina conditions in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean and generally warmer than normal temperatures in the uh, Atlantic Basin. Again, more on that over the next couple of minutes. But an inhibiting factor is an influx of dry desert air from North Africa that rides westward with the trade winds this time of the year and uh, can certainly become an inhibiting factor for uh, either the development or intensification of tropical systems. This is a look at the current Saharan desert air that is moving westward across the uh, tropical regions of the Atlantic Ocean shown here in brown and this right here is the west coast of Africa and here comes the Sahara desert air right into the Caribbean Sea and even uh, into portions of the Gulf of Mexico uh, again this is an inhibiting factor something that will I believe uh, take place from time to time over the next couple of months and it could produce some uh, very orange sunrises and sunsets in the eastern and southern part of the U.S. over the next few days. Uh, and this is, again, having some kind of an impact right now on the in inhibiting side 
of things. Again, we may have a tropical system right here that will uh, probably remain weak, partly as a result of this influx of dry desert air. This tropical system moves from southeastern Caribbean Sea right towards the Yucatan Peninsula and probably right into Mexico, Mexico over the next several days, maybe the next seven to 10 days or so. And again, we have the Sahara Desert Air right now throughout much of the uh, breeding ground regions of the Atlantic Ocean. Well, I talked about uh, some interesting changes here to the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Basin. I want to focus in on that over the next few minutes. There's some very interesting changes. This is a map from tropicaltidbits.com that shows the seven-day change in sea surface temperatures and uh, a couple of them important areas to focus in on with respect to the Atlantic Basin tropical season. Take a look here in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, quite a drop off in sea surface temperatures over the last seven days or so. And that's not the only important region here. We have uh, quite a drop off of temperatures in much of the uh, Atlantic Ocean here, the uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean here. This is the west coast of Africa. Again, this is only a seven day uh, change, but it's uh, certainly a trend uh, we will continue to monitor over the next couple of weeks here. This is very interesting indeed here that we have this cooling off of the sea surface temperatures. Again, one of the uh, most favorable factors for an, uh, what is likely to be an above normal season is the fact that the Atlantic Ocean, the tropical Atlantic, has been warmer than normal consistently over the last few years and likely will be again. But again, this is kind of a uh, an interesting development here over the last seven days or so. By the way, it's generally cooling off right here. This is the uh, development and intensification of La Nina conditions out there in the equatorial part of the uh, Pacific Ocean right here is the equator roughly right in this particular area here. This is the development of La Nina, cooler than normal sea surface temperatures out there over the uh, 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 tropical part, the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. So very interesting trend over the last seven days, uh, not only in the Pacific Ocean, but here as well, the Gulf of Mexico and much of the Atlantic Ocean. Well, other interesting uh, data that you can find at the Tropical Tidbits uh, Ocean Analysis part of their website here um, kind of confirms what we're just looking at here over the last seven days, the changes in the sea surface temperatures. This is a trend going back uh, more than seven days, all the way back to the early part of April with respect to the sea surface temperature anomalies over the Gulf of Mexico. Again, look at this drop off here, right here over the last uh, week or two here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is very impressive indeed and uh, something again we'll have to monitor over the next few weeks, over the next couple of months. If in fact this uh, stayed closer to normal that would uh, perhaps change from a strong favorable to maybe a more of a neutral tr type of signal here. Again this is over the Gulf of Mexico. Something indeed we'll monitor over the next couple of weeks. Now let's take a look at the Eastern Atlantic Ocean. And similar to the Gulf of Mexico, it's been dropping off here. Look at this trend here in the eastern part of the Atlantic Ocean. What we're looking at are sea surface temperature anomalies. And again, that trend has been for kind of a cooling off relative to normal. This is the eastern part of the uh, tropical Atlantic. That area that is just off the west coast of Africa and certainly an important area uh, for the potential uh, breeding ground region for tropical waves that come off the African west coast and then move westward with the trade winds out into the open Atlantic Ocean. But again, the trend in sea surface temperatures uh, is, is down here much as it is in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, again, we'll have to monitor this uh, interesting development here over the next few weeks and indeed over the next couple of months. Well, let's kind of shift gears and go back to the continental U.S. and there is a strong to severe thunderstorm threat later today into tonight across much of the Midwest. That shifts to the Mid-Atlantic region on Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night. And we'll kind of talk about that here over the next couple of minutes. This is the Storm Prediction Center. They're based out in uh, Norman, Oklahoma. 
uh, probability outlook for severe weather later today. And again, uh, the highest area right there in the middle Mississippi Valley, stretching uh, from the central plains all the way into the upper part of the Midwest. And then on Wednesday, that shifts right to the mid-Atlantic region, D.C. being right here, Philadelphia right here, New York City right in this region right here. Uh, there will be a chance of strong to severe thunderstorms uh, later today, Central Plains, Midwest, and later tomorrow, tomorrow night, right here in the mid-Atlantic region, uh, all as a result of a, a southeastward moving cool frontal system that arrives in the mid-Atlantic region on Wednesday night. It should sweep off the coast early Thursday, paving the way for another lower humidity type of air mass into the mid-Atlantic region later Thursday, Thursday night, and into the day on Friday. And then we may have a repeat performance uh, over the weekend with another frontal system causing some showers and thunderstorms in the mid-Atlantic region, let's say Saturday night and Sunday. But again, this is the uh, probability outlook for severe weather later tomorrow, tomorrow night in the mid-Atlantic region. Well, now let's take a look at the 850 milliwatt temperature anomaly forecast maps using last night's zero z run of the Canadian model here. And a, a pleasant air mass, again, came into the uh, mid-Atlantic region on Monday, remains intact for the most part today. It'll be very warm, but humidity levels will be moderate. Dew points this morning starting the day in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, way down in the 50s. That's uh, very comfortable for this time of the year when dew points can get up into the 70s in the uh, most uncomfortable uh, conditions possible. Now, let's move forward here. Wednesday, a brief uh, warm-up to uh, well up into the 90s in many areas, D.C., for example, on Wednesday afternoon, just ahead of that next cool frontal system, can uh, jump up into the mid to upper 90s on Wednesday afternoon, certainly the 90s likely tomorrow afternoon in Philadelphia, probably 90, 92 degrees in New York City on Wednesday, again, ahead of that next cool front, and uh, that cool front passes on through by the time we get to Thursday morning here, and a more comfortable air mass returns to the Great Lakes, to the Northeast, and into the Mid-Atlantic region. Humidity should lower during the day on uh, Thursday on the heels of that frontal passage late Wednesday night. And again, uh, that frontal passage could very well produce some uh, afternoon and evening thunderstorms uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night in the Mid-Atlantic region that can reach strong to severe levels. Let's move forward here. This comfortable air mass in the northeastern part of the country remains pretty much in, into the day on Friday. And then we kind of repeat the, the same kind of pattern where we get warmer, more humid again over the weekend in the mid-Atlantic region ahead of the cool frontal system. And that uh, pushes to the south and east here by Sunday morning. That front should start to move through the mid-Atlantic region and it can cause uh, some showers and thunderstorms that could be on the strong side. Again, late Saturday, Saturday night into the uh, day on a Sunday, but it'll be followed by another uh, comfortable air mass in uh, eastern Great Lakes, mid-Atlantic region, northeastern U.S. by the time we get to the early part of next week. Well, now let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps uh, from the Canadian model run from Zero Z last night. Uh, Quiet conditions today, plenty of sunshine, really wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Again, very warm temperatures, but comfortable humidity levels. Starting off today with dew points in the 50s, D.C., uh, Philadelphia, New York City can certainly reach 90 degrees this afternoon, but uh, it'll be kind of acceptable conditions here with the dew points at uh, relatively comfortable levels. Now, let's move forward here. Again, a quick spike in temperatures on Wednesday just ahead of that next cool front it goes up to 95 degrees for sure place like DC maybe low to mid 90s in Philadelphia tomorrow afternoon just ahead of that cool front and here we go by uh, tomorrow evening showers and thunderstorms break out in the middle Atlantic region in the Ohio Valley some of these can reach strong to severe levels we're talking about probably in that let's say 3 or 4 p.m time frame all the way out to 9 or 10 p.m. time frame along the I-95 corridor of the Middle Atlantic region. Again, we're talking midweek here on Wednesday afternoon and evening. Here we go into late tomorrow night, still remaining 
uh, showers and thunderstorms along that uh, frontal system. That jet, uh, it looks like it'll clear the coast sometime Thursday morning, maybe a lingering shower in some portions of the eastern mid-Atlantic Thursday morning, but in general, an improving day with lowering humidity values uh, during the day on Thursday, places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and the rest of the mid-Atlantic region, and that high-pressure system dominates right to the end of the work week, and then we have kind of a repeat performance with another frontal system out over the Midwest, could cause some strong to severe thunderstorms out over the uh, Midwest on Saturday. That activity moves into the Mid-Atlantic region by Saturday night and it looks like it'll stick around right into the day on Sunday. And Here we go into uh, midday on Sunday and here's our frontal system at this particular time. And Again, there can be some showers and thunderstorms on Saturday night and Sunday in the Mid-Atlantic region and that too will continue to move off to the south and east. And here, by the way, is that tropical system we alluded to way back in the beginning of this video discussion, probably crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula region, moves into the eastern part of, Te of uh, Mexico, and maybe has an impact on southern Texas as well. We're talking about the latter part of the upcoming weekend. It has a chance of becoming a named tropical system, but that's uh, certainly not a guarantee. And again, We'll continue to monitor the uh, interesting change in the sea surface temperatures over the Gulf of Mexico and uh, much of the Atlantic Ocean as well in that they have dropped rather significantly over the last couple of weeks and uh, that'll be an interesting thing, uh, interesting uh, development to monitor over the next few weeks as we progress well into the 2024 tropical season. That's it for now for ArcFieldWeather.com. This has been Meteorologist Paul Dorian.